A-A-Ron. Yeah. Why didn't you say it the first time I said A-A-Ron? Because it's pronounced Aaron. You done messed up, A-A-Ron! A.A. Run right here, everyone, uh, joined, as always, by the lovely, relatable Reese. How are you doing this uh, fine afternoon? You know, um, I think I'm doing pretty good. I got good sleep last night, too. Yeah, I mean, um, were you recently ill or has it just been me? I think just you. I had Shark Week and then I've had some allergies. But allergies tend to kind of take me down, so I slept like an ice cube last night. Nice. Well, those are the good old days from the uh, the iceberg days. Uh, between last night and the night before, I am fully caught up on any sleep that I was lacking. It feels good to finally, finally sleep through the night. <sighs> Head colds are just the worst. I still don't know if it was COVID. I never got tested, but I just assume that it is. I don't know. You sound better. You got a little color in your face, but you are missing some hair today. <laughs> I'm not putting the hat on for this video. I'm not putting the hat on. It's kind of weird, though, to see you bald. Oh, John Sostowski says uh, the blue cowboy hat was just delivered. Wow. Oh, my um, God. He probably gets like a delivery notification, right? Uh, man, you're making me want to go check the front door. And uh, I wish and that we knew that. that. I you know what? You know what? Do it. Depending on how long this goes, because there's like four or five other videos I was like trying to get done today. I've just been I've been on the phone all day. Um, but I'm thinking. Depending on how long we go on this, maybe we do another little thing later in the in the evening. Who knows? And if we don't, don't do it without me. We I won't. To... Okay. I won't. I'll I won't do upset. it without you. Okay. So, guys, we, we have another one of these magical recorded phone calls to share with you. And um, it is with uh, Reese's mother-in-law, Brenda Argis. Um, it's your ex mother-in-law, but that get that uh, no one really cares. Like, like even after you got divorced from her son, she's continued to be a fixture in your life as if she was your mother-in-law. She's been your close friend. Oh my God. A hundred percent. Yeah. No, 100%. Nothing, nothing changed when we got divorced. As a matter of fact, we always kind of laughed because I stayed closer to her than her own son. <laughs> yeah. I mean, we were very, very close guys. She called me her daughter all the time. Yeah, there you go. Okay, so the context for this call is your mother-in-law, Brenda Argis, was sent from the Scientology organization in Kansas City to flag the Scientology organization in Clearwater, Florida. She was sent to participate in Miscavige's new executive training program that is training brand new command teams for every Scientology organization in the world because once again, David Miscavige has decided that nobody has properly understood an L. Ron Hubbard policy letter before. He's redoing the entire organization executive course. He's redoing the entire flag executive briefing course. And without, without precisely defining those for you guys watching, those are the two most comprehensive and complete courses that exist in Scientology on the subject of Scientology management and L. Ron Hubbard's management policies. Oh, yeah, my phone's a little... My camera's a little messed up. My cat is doing that. She's behind the screen and she's rubbing her head on. So it keeps like pushing forward. Come here, kid. Okay. So, so your mother-in-law, Brenda, was sent to participate in this training program. Every org in the world, of which there's about 150 orgs. And, and do you guys know there's only about 150 Scientology organizations in the entire world? But Miscavige has... That. Yeah, no, it's totally true. Um, Miscavige has said that every org has to send, what, six, seven, eight, nine, ten people because... Every org is getting brand new executive command teams, okay? And this training program has been going on for years now. Your mother-in-law was sent to train to become the deputy executive director for, one, uh, for the Kansas City Org. Now, the woman that she was there with who was training to be the executive director dropped dead, right? That's right. And, and when that happened, did... Was Brenda bumped up where she was supposed to be now the executive director? Yes. Yes. And her, the woman who dropped dead, her husband came and took over, just, just took over for her, took her place. So I don't honestly know. He wasn't going to be the ED. He's the longest uh, standing staff member there, Alex Carr. He was the qualification secretary uh, over division five, but he was, I don't think they were going to make him the ED, but he was maybe going to be the DED, the deputy executive director. Yeah. But he like immediately came and took her place. That's right. Liz Carr dropped dead and Scientology was like, you know what we should do? Even though Liz died alone in a hospital without any of her family present, uh, we should send her husband to replace her because it just feels right. Yeah, he wasn't there when she died. No one no one informed him. 
Uh, they literally dropped her off at an emergency room. No one went in with her. Brenda told me this story because she asked me to sit down because she was about to tell me what happened. No one went in with her. They just dropped her off and she wasn't feeling right. She was super dehydrated and went into cardiac arrest and died. It's the, one of the saddest things. It was horrible. It was really and sad for me. She's like, uh, the best way to honor the memory of Liz Carr is to send her husband onto the training program um, since uh, clearly she's not going to finish the program. Yeah, because you got to replace that person, right? And who are you going to replace him with? Who's yeah. going to volunteer to go train for three years overnight? <laughs> yeah. So um, unbeknownst to David Miscavige in Scientology, Brenda was in touch with you pretty regularly while she was on that program. And she mm -hmm. was telling you everything that was going on, including leaking the, the crazy information that Miscavige took all of these trainees, of which there was at least like 500, between 500 and 1,000, but less than 1,000, and said, you know what we're going to do with all of these trainees? Um, studying during the day, like a normal Scientologist in a normal Scientology org, that just, say, that just sounds too easy. We're going to make these guys sleep during the day. We're going to make them study at night. We're going to create an entire another night shift. That's never occurred before in the history of Scientology. We're going to make all of these command teams from every org in the world study and get auditing all night long and they're going to sleep during the daylight hours we're going to completely turn their circadian rhythm completely upside down turn it completely up on its head and um and we're going to give a bunch of people heart attacks i mean honestly i i i'm dying to hear from the people in the live chat the former scientologists maybe some people back in the old days on the apollo what in god's name could justify taking an entire training program of people and completely reversing their schedule to become night people instead of day people. I mean, and anyway, uh, until you had told me this info and you learned it from Brenda, if someone had ever told me that this was happening, I would have said that is impossible. That is not possible. I remember telling you and you were like, what? I was like, you must have misunderstood. Yeah, I'm like, that goes, that goes against like, even if you're a Scientologist believing all of L. Ron Hubbard's bullshit, that goes against anything L. Ron Hubbard ever said about what would be appropriate and an acceptable way to deliver courses and auditing. And people say David Miscavige can never change anything. David Miscavige can change whatever the hell he wants to change. Yep. So guys, yep. we're going to share. This is the phone call we're sharing with you. Brenda is talking about this kind of night the, schedule. Yeah, like the ins and outs of it. Um, I remember. So again, guys, I'm finding all these recordings I didn't know I had. I, I found this one last night. Um, this one I recorded because I was talking to, this is when I told Aaron that I had found out about it. And he was like, what else? He was asking me questions. I didn't know the answers to. So the next time I talked to her, I recorded this so that I could write down the answers and send them to Aaron, just like more kind of, you know, what's involved in this overnight thing. What are they doing? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. so that's, that's why I recorded this. This is a short one, but it's uh, it's interesting. Like it, you'll find this very interesting. This is not yeah. like the last calls where I'm complaining to her about my problems. This is just me asking her questions and going, holy shit, that doesn't sound right. That's right. And the fact the fact that Scientology then ended up discovering after interrogating Brenda, that Brenda had shared all this information with Reese is why from all the evidence that Reese and I have looked at, it does look like they have kicked Brenda off of staff, not just out of Clearwater, but it looks like they've kicked her off of staff. Um, this is only a seven minute phone call and uh, I'll do my best not to interrupt all the time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there might be some times to do. I mean, it's weird. It is it's weird. Real weird. All right, let's take a listen guys. Um, and uh, I, I did my best to adjust for audio levels. Uh, please let me know in the live chat if it's, if it's okay probably have to have a special do this schedule and we'll probably have to have a special schedule for him but not a single person everybody's adjusting to it yeah i mean not that they like it but <laughs> and know. and why are they doing it they're doing that schedule because there's the course room is so busy during the day yeah because there's just so many of us now that it just we take up so much room that it, there'd be no room for public. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. I can't yeah. help but I have to jump in. I know. I knew you were going to over that. 
Guys, I was on the first, well, there's probably tons of training evolutions before my time, but usually in the past training evolutions were for like management, management teams. In 1996, David Miscavige did what I believe was probably the first major technical training evolution. Miscavige decided no one had ever learned how to audit correctly before. And he was, he created a whole new system of training auditors. He needed to create new course supervisors for every org in the world. And in 1996, 1995, 1996, there was a training program called the golden age of tech training program. Now it's called the golden age of tech one, because he did it again, 20 years later. There was over a thousand of us from all over the world on this training program. In addition to the flag public, we never had any problems fitting everyone into the course rooms. And that was before the giant flag building ever opened up. That's when all the training was in the coachman building and the coachman building, which is on Fort Harrison in Cleveland, right at the intersection was the only course rooms in all of flag, uh, you know, for the, for the, for the, for the training. We never had a problem. There's fewer people on the current training evolution than there was back in 1996. And the idea that even with J F Flag's giant new building, there's just not enough room to fit everybody is absolute garbage. Yeah, it's huge, isn't it? I mean, it's enormous. It's the building. giant. Yeah. Yeah, it's growing pretty big. Huh. Well, so, wow. That's too bad, more though. And more and more staff members are coming on to the night schedule. Because, like, I saw a staff member that I know, and I said, hey, are you doing the day schedule or night schedule? He goes, I'm on day schedule. Then a couple weeks later, I saw him on the night schedule. I said, oh, you're on the night schedule. And he goes, yeah, for a while. So do they have people well, training during the day, too? No, not on this program. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. All the outer org trainees are overnight, right? That's what I thought. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There must be a so, lot of people training during the day then that they can't fit together. Yeah. I mean, at first when there was only like, you know, 14 or we were like org number 14. And when it was just like, you know, 14 to 20 or whatever it was, there was room for all of us. I mean, it was squishy. But there was room. Mm -hmm. But now there's like, like fifty orgs. So, wow. It's just yeah. It's just getting too crowded, you know. Yeah. So that's a lot so it's of kind of nice because. But we have like a whole building to ourselves, though. So that's kind of nice. Like all the spaces, you know, every single course room just for us right so so there is plenty of room now yeah that's true so and i suppose the public during the day training enjoy it too yeah so. exactly hmm. well that makes sense it just occurred to me <clears throat> i have always speculated and i've said it on my channel many times that david miscavige doesn't want the command teams of these orgs to see that flag course rooms are actually close to empty, that there's very, very little public actually on course. And I continue to believe that that could be a major reason, but I wonder if it was also his way of making sure that the outer org trainees <clears throat> didn't have an opportunity to fraternize with the flag public. Um, it seems like a pretty extreme measure to take, but that's always sort of been a problem in the past. You know, some, at work training from Italy falls in love with some pretty girl from Florida and always next, next thing you know, the we've lost a member of the command team. <laughs> yes. No, that's that. I mean, it does make you wonder like, why did he go off the rails so far and, and decide to do this? And if you listen to this call, you can really hear and understand the brainwashing. Like I'm trying my best to kind of veer her off of what she's believing in like a subtle way. Like when I'm like, wow, there must be like, you can tell she has no idea. She's just being told and she's just convinced. You can just tell she's like, it's yeah, it's just so. And she's like, we, we hated it, but you know, we're getting used to it. It's like, you can tell it's wrong, but she's just going along with it. And that's what Scientology becomes once you're sucked fully in. Yeah. But <clears throat> so honestly, I was feeling bad releasing this because again, Brenda was my closest person to me, but at the same time, like this is meaningful for you guys, for the people in the bubble, 
But it also, I hope this sometime, maybe Brenda will get out. I don't think I want to have anything to do with her, but maybe she'll save herself and get out. Yeah. Hey, if you had to guess, how old is Brenda? I don't have to guess. I think she's 63, 64. Okay. Doug is like 70. And so Doug... Um, <clears throat> oh, that's right. Doug's not in the program. It was it was um, the other car. Wait, wait, Doug, wait, D Doug, Doug, Brendan, Doug, or is Doug also Liz Carr's husband's name? No, that's Alex Carr. Alex Carr. How old is Alex Carr, if you had to guess? Uh, Liz was 61, and I think Alex is like 67 or 8. So, and he's the one that's on the program now. So you've got a guy who's almost 70 years old, and he is he is studying and working all night and sleeping all day. The, these guys, uh, Ms. David Miscavige installed blackout curtains on all yep. of the windows of all of the hotel rooms where these guys live so that the sun, they don't see the sun. Yes. And Brenda told me also when they get off the bus in the morning, when they're riding home from training all night, he makes them all wear really, really dark sunglasses. So they don't adjust to the sun. Yep, with blackout, with, with the windows of the buses blacked out, so no one sees the sun. That's not a vitamin D issue or anything, I'm sure. Dude, it's crazy. It is crazy. It's it's really bad. Yeah. yeah. There must be I mean, I will have to say it went better than I thought it would. We were all just really bitching about it when, when we heard it was going to happen. We're like, oh my God, and we're all looking up on Google, like, how is it for your body, and what do you have to do to you know, maintain your health on that schedule and stuff. And, and uh, then we got into it and we just, we eased into it. You know, mm -hmm. we did it over a week's period of time. A and week? It was pretty cool because the soups at the end of the day, they would be like, we made it through another day. Good job. <laughs> you know? Yeah. But people were, at first they were like falling asleep on the last slot, the last study slot, you know? Yeah, I would, I would imagine. Was, yeah. Um, there's people literally like sucks sleeping. for the soups too, who had to adjust to that. Exactly. Well, mm -hmm. it was kind of cool because we were all in it together, you know? Mm -hmm. so, so that's, that's the thing. I mean, the thing is what she said there though, it's, it's, it, 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 it's kind of important. That's how a lot of stuff gets. Uh, I was going to say justified, but that might be the wrong word. And, and, and sometimes like if you're in war and you're going through hell and it's an unimaginable situation, what is the saving grace? We're all in this together. I love my brothers. It's 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 the thing you fall back on. We're all doing it together, guys. No matter no matter how bad it is, we're all doing it together. And it is better to do things together that are terrible. Like if I get food poisoning and shit my pants, I want Jeff to have it as well. <laughs> So that I'm like, at least it's both of us. That's what I thought of about not war so much, just <laughs> crapping our pants on a Friday night after bad salads. You're like, Jeff, let's make a shit sandwich together. <laughs> or, you know, going through a haunted house or something. It's like, at least I have you with me. Yeah, yeah. No, that's yeah. If that's what we have to compare this to. Yeah. But did you I mean, did you hear her? She was like about the just like people falling asleep and like all of that. I'm like, all of red flags are going off in my mind. Yeah. And she's just casually kind of chuckling through it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, it's already hard enough if you're on a normal day schedule where you're studying until 9 30, 10 o'clock at night. Now imagine you're studying. It's four 30 in the morning. Anyway, yeah. she, she gets into more than that. Like the, when they eat their meals and all this kind of stuff. Yeah. It's crazy. Just listen. Yeah. But one thing we were wondering about is we'd be like, are we going to go in for breakfast and they're going to give us dinner? You know, like it's going to be backwards. Mm -hmm. Or like, oh, God, I hope not. I can't stand the thought of eating dinner at breakfast. Oh, God. Yeah. But, um, but no, they made it breakfast. Oh. So the kitchen crew, they have a whole, you know, nighttime kitchen crew who does our, you know, breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Then during the day, there's a whole nother crew that does everybody else's wow so it's a lot of coordination it is that's a lot and like i say there's probably a lot of staff too sea org staff that now have to follow that schedule oh yeah definitely it keeps increasing all the time wow there's a t lots of auditors and soups and word clearers so are people auditing overnight mm -hmm. yeah yeah 
Interesting. I went I went in session today, in fact, for four hours. So my session was from like I went in like at ten, ten fifteen. Got done about four. In the morning? Uh-huh. So weird. Scientologists around the world, if you had told them that David Miscavige implemented a system where hundreds and hundreds of people were going to be audited uh, at the for between the hours of one o'clock in the morning and six o'clock in the morning, they would have said, "That's a disgusting lie, and you're spreading black PR." That nobody would ever do that. Like people say, I mean, uh, literally, if you believe in what L. Ron Hubbard said, you could never ever implement a system like that. Um, it was like a high crime. I don't know if it was a high crime, but I remember it being a big deal to be in session past like eight or nine o'clock at night. 100%. And the person who implemented that rule was David Miscavige. It became during normal waking hours that even if you were well fed and well rested, you could not audit someone from like 10 p.m. to 3 p.m. It was it was it was deemed, of course, and it was deemed this way based on L. Ron Hubbard references that you could only audit someone according to the auditor's code and other things L. Ron Hubbard said about the auditor's code during normal waking hours. Yeah, but I mean, like, He's to the degree that, like I just said, you couldn't do anything past like eight o'clock. Right. Like it's you really take care of the PC, the preclear, the person being audited to make sure they're well rested. What she just said, what did she say? Midnight to 4 a.m. Yeah, that is truly so off policy. Like yeah. that's really sick. It's not right. It's yeah. not. It, it, I, I'm still trying to understand what's behind this other than mind control, sleep deprived people. Um, you make them more into zombies when they don't have vitamin D and they don't see the sun and they're just slaves. Yeah. I don't know. You know, people in the live chat, um, former CERG members, anyone who did the RPF, and it's going to be hard for me to pay close attention to the live chat, but I'm going to try. I'll watch. And uh, what I'm about to ask is even, even in the normal Sea Org, there's no such thing as the overnight crew. No. Um, now, does that mean some Sea Org members don't pull all nighters? Of course not. Some Sea Org members pull all nighters, but there's never ever been such a thing as a night shift for any reason ever that I'm aware of. The only uh -huh. exception that I that I that is out of my outside of my experience, and I'm that's why I want to get feedback from other people, is um, in Los Angeles particularly. They they have the mill, the mill that's run by Sea Org members. It's run by people who are on the RPF, and I'm wondering if the mill was on a 24 hour schedule where there was a day shift and a night shift because this mill would make all of the wooden furniture for the new Scientology buildings around the world, and even the, so, but even so, so I'm wondering. Could the mill have been on night shift? Could this have been where Miscavige is like, oh, if we can do it there, we like who knows what's going through his head. But if anyone was on the RPF in Los Angeles, uh, and I think there might also be a mill in Europe, but I'm not sure. Like, like when I say a mill, I'm, I mean, like the industry, the most expensive industry leading machines, the CNC machines and all that kind of stuff. Dylan Gill would know if Dylan's um, if Dylan's in the chat. But yeah, this is so this is crazy. Even by Sea Org standards, this is absolutely crazy. Yeah, this is crazy. I would We're all like people are going to look at our folders in the future and they're going to be like, wait a minute. These guys went in session at midnight. What the hell? I know. Like what is, what is going on here? <laughs> I, I would think that like there's policy on that. I mean, I would think LRH wrote about that. Like, well, he did. But the thing is, is like, you know, he he was talking about people on day schedules. You know, no one ever dreamed of a night schedule. Yeah, but I just it's, it's basically like you're switched around. Well, I know. You know I just does. still think I would wonder what LRH would think about that. Like, he mm -hmm. wrote a lot about the body and sleep and nutrition and stuff. So I'm like, yeah, I wonder. True. I wonder if there's any mm -hmm. kind of policy on it, but probably not. Yeah. I don't know. Well, don't I also know. think that if, if they started having like lots of problems, like let's say that nobody was sessionable or there's like tons of red tags or, yeah. you know, like if it was a totally bonkers thing, they'd have to reconsider it, you know, but it's actually been going pretty amazingly. Nice. Okay. And what's weird is like, like I say, what's weird is like, you know, when you're inside the building and you're, you know, doing like it feels like noon, like midnight feels like noon. Oh, sure. When we go in and we're eating our breakfast at eight, 
eight thirty. It feels like eight thirty in the morning. It's just so weird. Minus the sun. The only, <laughs> yeah, the, exactly. The only thing that's strange is that you know when you get up and you go outside in the morning, it's like night. Yeah. So you're like, oh, and then you get off and it's day. So that so is the weird. weird part. Yeah, that's weird. But once you're inside and you're working away, it just feels like feels like you know morning, noon, and night. It's sure. So weird. That does have to be weird. That would be weird. Well, and like <laughs> the fact that you can't talk to your family as much because we're all sleeping. Exactly. But yeah. Yeah, that's true. That's I'm sure you'll never want to sure. do oh, this well. again. That's right. I, I was reminded the reason you always ended up speaking to her at about 10 in the morning or 11 o'clock in the morning is she was calling you after she finished course for the day, but before she went after she finished course for the night, but before she went to sleep for the day, right? Before lights out. Yep. They come around and tell everybody lights out just like prison. That's right. Mm hmm. Schedule. Oh, Lord, no. There's number three. <laughs> Lord, <laughs> so like, no. I was saying to Elizabeth or someone, I was like, yeah, never again. No. Uh -uh. I'll never have a job or anything with a night shift. Yeah, or I, I mean, if there's training in the future, I would think you'd be like, no. I'm not doing that schedule. Exactly. Yeah. Did it once. That's enough. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, speaking of your yeah. schedule, I was going to say, I think you have to go to bed. Yeah, I do. Got to turn in. Okay. Well, there we go. Yeah. I mean, also, you can tell right there, like how resistant she was to it when she was like, oh, Lord, no, no, I'll never do this again. But basically, I have no choice right now. Like, it's really sad to me that they can't just leave. They can't just walk out the door. They can't say, this isn't for me. I'm 65 years old. I've never done a schedule like this before. I have health issues. Brenda has some health issues. I mean, a lot of people have health issues as they age. And there's a lot of older people on that program. That's why when you told me that Liz Carr had almost literally just dropped dead, I was like, oh, my God. These guys have blood on their hands. They've taken all of these older people. And, and by the way, it's not like they tell them before they go to the training program. Hey, by the way, we got this training program. You're going to be staying up all night. They, uh, they don't tell you about it before. And you don't opt in to the program beforehand. You show up to flag yeah. thinking you're on a normal training program. And you learn, oh, no, 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 no. We, we're, doing a, we're doing a night schedule. And you're not allowed to just be like, oh, no, thanks. I didn't understand that and leave. That's not an option. If you leave, you're, you'd be in deep shit. Yep. That's right. Um, I was going to say something and then it left. I don't know. But well, just about Liz Carr. I mean, so the fact that this, this, this woman who is, I don't know, uh, uh, how old would you guess Liz was? She was 61. I know that for a fact. Okay. It's just. I mean, I as wanna, far as I don't want to call her a senior citizen. I mean, I don't want to call her a senior. 61 is not a senior. 61 citizen. is young. 61 is very point. young. I mean, Jeff is 65. I think about it all the time. I'm terrified all the time. I'm like, I hope I have plenty of time with him. I mean, that probably stems from my previous husband passing away, but I'm, I'm terrified. I 61 is very young. I worked in senior living. That's young. And, um, I also just want to say about Liz, like, it's weird because she was, as far as I know, very healthy. She was a very thin, very healthy woman. She did smoke. A lot of people smoke in Scientology. I don't know if she still smoked, but she smoked when I was on staff. Um, but yeah, switching someone to that kind of a schedule. And then she just drops dead. And I remember talking to Kathy about it, who was extremely close to Liz. And of course, they justify it away. And Kathy was like, you know, I've gotten in calm with her since she dropped the body, of course. And she was like, you know, she's totally fine. Um, she said she she wasn't feeling. She goes, you know that feeling, Reese? Like, you just don't feel good. And I was like, I guess, yeah. I mean, that happens. And she was like, that's how she felt all the time. But she didn't realize it until she had died. And she was like, she was really happy to just discard the body because she just felt better. It's so weird how they justify that away. But then if a non-Scientologist dies... Or if a Scientologist not in good standing dies, well, they were PTS and rotting away anyway. And 
But like if a, if a, if a good Scientologist dies, it's like, well, they wanted to, you know what I mean? She wasn't feeling great all the time. She's glad she did it. <laughs> 61. I doubt very strongly that Liz wanted to die. She had a daughter that's younger than me, a husband. I don't buy that. Liz really loved her life. I mean, being, being a, really a soldier in Scientology, but she loved her marriage. I knew Liz very well. I met her when I was six years old. I lived with Liz when I was on staff. I knew her very well. Yeah, that is an excellent point. Uh, it's also easily disproven what she's, what, what, <clears throat> what Brenda said about Liz, because if someone's complaining of chronic body problems, which is what Scientology would call it, those people are considered a, a threat, a risk to flag, to the flag land base. Someone who's complaining of chronic body problems or constantly not feeling well wouldn't even be allowed to remain on the training program. So it's, it's bullshit. It's bullshit. Oh, she That's was ready true. to go. If she was ready to go, flag would have kicked her the hell out months and months and months earlier. You know, flag does not put up with people who constantly have medical problems. They're like, we don't have time for that. And the last time someone died on this base, it caused us a huge headache. That's true. That's true. I mean, if you have a sniffle, you're in isolation. Yeah. So that is very true. And, you know, I also think Liz was probably healthy, but just super sleep deprived. Probably her Brenda told me the first thing the hospital noted was that she was super dehydrated, which makes me very sad. I'm sure she was overworked. But I mean, I doubt that she was dying. I doubt that she was, you know, I went to my doctor's, my normal doctor appointment last few days ago, and I'm a super hypochondriac. And I was like, I feel this, I feel that. And I was like, I think it's stage four pancreatic cancer. And she was like, well, you're on the wrong side. That would be on your right side. And you're complaining about your left side. And I was like, well, I was born with it on the left side. And she was like, Reese, and she was like, in all seriousness, she goes, I, you, we go through this every three months with you. She was like, you're not dying. <laughs> she was like, you know, you, you look like a healthy person. She was like, I'm a doctor. I see unhealthy people. I see when people are dying. It makes me think of Liz because again, this isn't someone I just kind of knew or was associated with. I knew her very well. I knew the ins and outs of that woman. And it just makes me, I don't know, I still feel very sad about that. That's why I hadn't been back to the org and I kind of refused to ever go back, but I did go for her funeral yeah. where you remember where they were clapping and freaking out and doing weird yep. things. But you're right. For Kathy to say, well, she was just, you know, she was kind of dying anyway and she's glad she did it. It's, it's Oh, Kathy's was, the one who said that? Kathy, I I not Brenda. Brenda. Oh, no, it was I Kathy. It. I got it. And it's such a dis dim, the, when, when people say that about people who die in Scientology, I always thought that is such a disservice to the person who died. That is so disrespectful and rude to speak yeah. for them and be like, well, they wanted to, you know, they just felt like dropping the body and rotting to death of cancer. And, and it's what's best for everybody. It's like, man, I hope, I hope you don't say that about me. Cause that's so disrespectful. You know, I really hadn't thought about that until you just mentioned it. If a high level, and I'm just repeating what you said, if a high level Scientologist, an OT Scientologist dies young, it, they make it act like it was their OT powers that allowed them to drop their body. But if a normal or if a low level Scientologist or a non-Scientologist drops their body young or die, I should dies young, sorry. It's because they were out ethics, PTS, DB, didn't have the tech, da, 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 da. And you're like, huh. Yep. I'm not sure. Not sure the math on this makes sense. I, I'm, I'm, <laughs> they've managed to explain away what, what powerful OTs dying young, as if it's like a special ability. Do you notice either way they diagnose the shit out of it? Either way, this is what Scientologists do behind your back, whether you're alive or dead. Uh, if you, you know, to your face, they won't say anything. But the second you leave the room, they evaluate for you. They tell you what tone level you are. They tell you where you are on the scale, um, all those things. But even dead. They like to go, well, they died because they were connected up with that husband of theirs. He was a, he was an SP. He was an SP. So she was PTS to him. And, you know, that's what created all of this. And they 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 can it's a whole map that they lay out for you, whether they were a good Scientologist and they go, well, she didn't want to be here anymore. And she had bigger fish to fry and a bigger game to play. And they either way. I don't know. I, I think I have a button on this because when my husband passed away, Fred, I know people are just trying to be nice, but even non-Scientologists would come up to me and they'd be like, you know, right now he's in heaven and he's building that house for you too. 
And uh, like people would say stuff like that to me and I would just go, okay, yeah, thanks. But it kind of bothers me when somebody dies, have a little more risk. I know that they're not trying to be disrespectful. I totally get that. But like best for me, like don't locate them. Don't tell me what they're up to these days. Like, let's just honor them. Let's just say how much we love them in life, how beautiful of a human being they were. And, 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 you know, I don't know. I, I have a problem with that either way. Like Kathy just going, she went on and on and on and on. She was like, you know, and she just, she's here at flag now. I've been in calm with her. Oh yeah. I hate that shit. It's like, okay, can we just let them rest? She's like, so Liz Carr, she, 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 she was saying Liz Carr, her spirit, her Thetan, her was hanging around flag, basically waiting to pick up a brand new upstat Scientology baby body. Yep. And that's what she wanted to do. According to Kathy, that's what she wanted to do. She wa uh, Abby is Michael's age. So those guys are five years younger than me. So 35, 34, her daughter's 34, uh, just newly married, no children. Um, her and her daughter were incredibly close. Liz only had one child, loved kids. Liz loved children. Uh, Liz was crazy about Alex, her husband. So it really upsets me when people, like when Kathy did that. I thought, you know, I bet Liz would dis disagree with you to the extreme to be like, she just wanted to go. That really is. That really is even more fucked up than I was thinking it was. Because it's like, you know what, Kathy? If this fiction that you're telling yourself and others that she really wanted to go was true, she probably would have told her family, guys, I'm struggling. It's time for me to go. I want to see one last time. I love you. No, she died alone in the hospital. Her family wasn't even informed she was in the hospital. Does that sound like someone who wanted to die? Right, right. Who got dropped off, guys, by a Sea Org member in an ER. That is not how I want to go. Is that how you want to go, Aaron? I hope Your not. family uninformed? That's really quite twisted when you, it makes me very angry. It's, it's twisted and it's just so it's such a slap in the face to the person who passed to be like, well, you know, they wanted to, you know, even Alex, I sent you the video of him singing at her funeral, her husband. Mm -hmm. And at the end of the song, he said, like, we didn't want to say goodbye, but you had to go because you had a better game to play. And it's like, is this how we look at this? Yeah. I mean, I, I I guess I've dealt with a lot of loss being in senior living. I also lost my husband. I don't I don't view it that way at all. Like it just makes me kind of sad for the person who passed to be like, you know, just almost just they're just tossed aside like yeah. that. Well, and when he finished that song at her, uh, they wouldn't even call it a funeral, right? They were like, "Don't cry." They had, everyone stood up and cheered and hooted and hollered and did the noisemakers like Taylor Swift had just finished performing. I mean, this was, there was, this was not a thing of, uh, this was not a somber, you know, this was a celebration. Yay. They went, they went to a party city or one of those places where you get like child's birthday stuff and they got all the new year's Eve stuff, the things that you blow into and then the clapper things. And they had confetti on every table at that funeral. And, I had not been that furious. I, I don't feel furious anymore. I, being, I could feel the heat in my face in that funeral. Like Scientology would always piss me off somehow. Every time I was at the org, I'd be like, within a few minutes, somebody would piss me off and I wanted to leave. And I remember sitting at that table and when they started the service, they said, if anybody cries, we don't want any tears. This is not, this is not a sad thing. We're going to pick up our things and make a bunch of noise and we're going to clap and yell and as if it's a fundraiser is what they said. Okay. I was pissed. I was pissed. The doors were shut. I wanted to leave. I had Huxley with me. I didn't want to just abruptly leave. There was a lot of people there, but Brenda went up. Everybody went up to speak who had worked with her very closely. Brenda worked very closely to Liz because she was the DED. Liz was the ED. They were together all the time. Brenda goes up there and she's like, I, um, uh, and like starts crackling in her voice, starts to cry. And Maggie goes, no crying, no cry, everybody. And everybody started doing the clapper things and blowing their little, whatever those things are. I was, I, I was like checking my vitals. I was like, okay, my blood pressure. Like I was so mad. <laughs> I was like, this is, I've been to so many funerals working in senior living. I'm not saying you have to sit there and cry, but like honor the person. It was so sick to me, you guys. 
just all the like, no crying, no crying. It was like, this is the most brainwashed shit. And I don't think this is how Liz would have wanted it. Yeah. Reese, you just reminded me of something. Um, Morton Astrup guard was a legendary registrar in the Sea Org. Um, the Astrup guards had been around forever. Um, his wife, Liz Astrup guard was the commanding officer of bridge publications. Um, Morton was a fundraiser, a Sea Org fundraiser, a registrar for the Free Winds ship. And Morton was posted in Los Angeles. He worked out of the Free Winds ship in Los, uh, the Free Winds office in Los Angeles. And he dropped dead. And um, what was circulated <clears throat> amongst all the Scientology folks was that what Morton would want, don't send flowers, don't send condolences, don't send gift baskets. Do you know what Morton would want? <laughs> he would want the free winds to have highest ever income oh my god <laughs> and to honor Morton's life he should send money to the free winds so that Morton has one last highest ever statistic so that his stats could be highest ever by the way he's dead don't don't worry about that too much but he would want you to give money to the free ones this week oh these guys don't give a fuck about anyone that is really fucked up it's more than fucked up the word that comes to mind for me on that Aaron is very twisted and it's it's really cruel God. I, I mean, mean, there's really. Uh, sorry. Go ahead. No, don't be sorry. I mean, even um, like, so, like, like, even when they sent Liz's husband to replace her on the training program, you'd think someone would have stepped in and been like, guys, the optics on this are so bad. Not even, we're not sent. She just died. She dropped dead in our care. We dropped her off at the hospital. Left her there alone. We didn't even tell her family she was in the hospital. Don't send her fucking husband. God forbid he dies. If he, I mean, on that thing alone, if I were in management, I'd be like, fuck no, you're not sending her a husband. What if he dies? We'll have killed the both of them. You don't put the president and the vice president on the same plane. Don't, don't send them both to flag. Jesus, we already killed one of them. That's a good point. There's something else that I didn't mention about this that's really fucked up. <laughs> It took me a minute to get over this. So after Liz died, I got immediately, almost immediately, I got an email from Dan and I got an email from Kathy. And they were like, then they texted me and they were like, did you get our email? And I'm like, no, let me go look. They had to start a GoFundMe to pay to have her cremated. And for all the expenses, I guess, that go into her hospital bills, because they didn't have health insurance and they raised $13,000 from all the Scientologists. They kept asking me, did you, did you give money to it? Did you give money to it? I was sickened by that. Think about this for a minute. That woman had been gone training for at least two years by the time she dropped dead, didn't get to go home for a Christmas, didn't see her daughter, hadn't seen anybody. She had nine or 10 brothers and sisters. Her mother is still alive. She's like 95 years old. Hadn't seen her family. And drops dead on their watch. Nobody there drops her off at a, at a hospital. And Alex has to raise money. This billion dollar organization that it happened on their watch doesn't even say we're going to cover the costs of all of this. It was a Scientology fundraiser, just like anything else, guys, just like anything else. They had to raise money to pay for her death. I got to tell you, I'm surprised they even let them do the fundraiser. I'm Why? surprised they, I'm surprised they even let them extract $16,000 of money or, or from the field. That's $16,000 that could have gone towards uh, an ideal org. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm surprised they even let oh, them publicly do like it. Optics wise. I thought you meant, because optics wise to me, that looks so bad. 
If this one, <laughs> I, I mean, agree. guys, I can't speak to this. I don't know. But like, mm. I, I know Jeff. Jeff has his own company. It's not a huge company, but he's had his own company longer than I've been alive. Okay. He's got good employees. They've been with him a long time. If something happened on Jeff's watch, and I'm just using Jeff because that's my closest example. If something happened on a, on a WOG company's watch and someone was killed or died, I would think Jeff even would step up and say, we want to give you, you know, we want to pay for this. I couldn't believe it. I couldn't believe it that the church didn't even step up. I mean, I could at the same time though, Aaron, I really was kind of in, in disbelief that this man's okay. Not only has to be shipped there to take her place and start working overnights, um, while their daughter is, I'm sure grieving that her mom just died and hasn't seen her in years. And, uh, that's right. Now the daughter's not going to see her, 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 her dad. Nope. Yeah. And that was Kathy's biggest thing to me too. When she called me, she said, we really need to get Abby handled. See, Abby's not a Scientologist anymore. And she goes, because Liz is hung up on Abby and worried about Abby. So she won't get a new body until we get that handled. So we need to get her, she said, like up and stable to where Liz feels like she can leave Abby and get, get a new body. Wow. Kathy told me that. God. And, and this Scientologists is when I was out. think it's the other religions that are crazy. <laughs> yeah. Or, or wogs that are crazy. Scientologists think wogs are nuts. Yeah. It it's was amazing. hardcore. That was hard for me. And and I wonder what went through the minds of other people at that funeral. I, I couldn't have been the only one that was fuming. I was fuming. I remember being like, I was so angry. I remember people who hadn't seen me in a while were like, hey, Reese. And I was like, hi. <laughs> I was just like, I can't even say hello. I'm so mad. Because the other reason I think I was so mad, I was actually trying to listen to people's stories. A lot of people went up to talk about Liz a lot of people went up to like a normal funeral, share a, a personal private story. And almost every single one started to tear up. And the second that happened, Maggie was like, no crying, everybody. And, and it would just cut that person off. And I couldn't hear the rest of the story. And so I was like, this is pissing me off. I'm here to listen to this heartfelt story. And you keep cutting everybody off that cries. Yeah. No emotion, everybody. Quick, get your clappers out. We're not allowed to show emotion here. Isn't that yeah. nuts? Oh my God, I, I was furious. As we play some of these phone calls, we've been talking a lot about how, <clears throat> how Scientology doesn't care about families. It's not just families that Scientology doesn't care about. It doesn't care about people. It doesn't care about people beyond whether that person represents potential income to the organization. That's it. Is this person good at bringing in other people who will give us more money? Is this good at bringing in? Is this person good at bringing in money? That's is this good at person good at bringing in money or bringing in other people who will bring in money or bringing other people who will work for us for no money is the only fucking thing Scientology cares about. Humanity is non-existent. It's a machine. You're absolutely right, guys. Families, none of that matters. And that's why. My dad was allowed to disconnect from me back when I was 16 and I stayed in Scientology until 38. No one batted an eye at that. That was fine. As long as he kept writing checks, which he did, there was nothing wrong with that. There's yeah. a lot wrong with that. Yeah. He's got a grandson he doesn't know. Yeah. There's a lot wrong with that. I want to, even though, you know, I always put a caveat, I don't like talking about other religions because I'm not a religious scholar. I'm not very educated on other religions, but it seems to me, and I know a lot of other religions have a lot of money, raise a lot of money, people tithe a lot of money. I, I, I understand that. But it seems to me that all other religions, if you had to describe them, like at least they care about people. I mean, I can't think of a religion. I can't think of a religion that d d does not demonstrate at least a care for people, at least for its people. Scientology doesn't even care about its people. That's what's like, it's like, really? You could you could work for this organization for 50 years. They don't give a damn about you. If, you, no, if I, you're going to require too much time and money, they kick you. If you get sick, medical bills, they kick you out. I mean. I don't think you have to be a religious scholar, Aaron, to say that. I don't know anything about religions much either, but I do have life experience working with non-Scientologists. Jeff, Jeff's family, they're all Methodists. Guys, 
the things I've witnessed are amazing as far as like, Aaron, when people die, they do these things called like meal trains where like people will sign up on a sheet of like bringing over casseroles and helping people will donate their time. People will do yard work for the person who, you know, is going through the grieving. I mean, there's so many things that never happens. I've never seen that in Scientology. I've never witnessed that. I've never seen anyone go, how, what can we do to help? Um, I mean, I'm sure they would do it if it was some high up person, right? Like, you know, somebody that maybe like, um, I don't know, don't you think like somebody that you would kiss their ass big time, you'd be like, what can we do to help you? But not, not the average Joe in Scientology. They don't give a shit. Oh yeah. So like if you're, <clears throat> yeah, yeah. If you're like a Tim, a Tom Cummins, a Tom Cruise, um, yeah. A big junk. name. Yeah. Yeah. If the, if the public got word that you, yeah, they might line up to kiss your ass, but that's only because you're a, a, a big muckety muck, not because well, and it's, it's expected right. because you're a big muckety muck, you know? Yeah. 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 But if, um, well, I mean, you saw it, they had to raise money with a GoFundMe. They had to call up all the public people in the field. Guys, I had been not active in Scientology in years and Dan and Kathy, it's like I was the first on their list. They're like, did you get our email? Did you donate? They are begging for money from someone who's not even active. Right. I wasn't even. Yeah, that's right. If I'm a scavenge and, you know, in, in a world that makes sense, if I'm a scavenge and I hear that an outer org trainee who'd been in our care for two years, who dedicated, I don't know, a couple, like 40 years of her life to working for our organization. At least, at, at least. least. And I heard that she died alone in an ER. My first call would be to the family members going, we've got everything covered. Don't you worry about a thing. I, I mean, and, and if I'm an executive in Scientology and I have Miscavige's ear and I hear that this happened, that I'm calling him. Hey, I just want to make sure you're okay. We got to call the family. Tell them we got everything covered. And you know, everything, everything, but no, instead we do a GoFundMe. And we ship Alex as her replacement immediately. It really don't, doesn't don't, get much worse. It doesn't get much worse. Don't worry about your 35-year-old daughter who's probably just absolutely beside herself that she just lost her mom that she hadn't seen in years because her mom already was on the training program and probably couldn't talk to her very often because she was doing the overnights. And uh, don't worry about her. Just get your ass down here and in gear and ready to, to get going on this three or four-year training program. And then while you're at it, you better raise enough money to pay these medical bills. Yeah. Unbelievable. Um, I've got a bunch of um <clears throat> a bunch of super chats in the queue. Shall we tackle them? We shall. Okay. Um, Luna's mom. Reese, how can I email you or contact you? I hear about you chatting with all your people and I want to join Team Reese. Oh, Luna's mom. First of all, thank you for that giant super chat. Thank you. Um, you can email me. My name is Reese Quibell, Q U I. B is in boy, E L L at gmail.com or of course, Facebook Reese Quibell. And then we have the Facebook group too, that people are a part of. So yeah, definitely reach out to me. Thank nice. you. Frank Woolrich um, sent email with a YouTube clip. You guys rock. Thank you very much, Frank. Mm -hmm. Tintin uh, calls are so crazy, weird and chilling and fascinating at the same time. Never doubt church of Scientology or nuts. Now the world can hear how psycho Scientology is. Danke schon. I don't know. Oh, A and R, Aaron and Reese. <laughs> Were you gonna say I don't know what that means? Yeah, I was like, oh, A and R, that's a German acronym. I don't understand that. <laughs> <laughs> Danke schön, uh, Steve Britton. How old is the amazing fax man? I guess that's uh, that's the Marvel name for Dan O'Connor. <laughs> his... uh, Dan. Let's see. He's. I think he is six years older than me, so he would be forty-five. Is he only? I would. That means Dan's only three years older than me, and I would I would have guessed he was more older than me than that. But I guess I guess you I know. think he's six. I think okay, because Kathy's uh, ten years older than me, and they're four years apart. So I think so. Oh, okay, all right. Roxanne uh, Christinger, I wonder which DM. I wonder which which David Miscavige finds the most upsetting: the lawsuits or these recordings being leaked. He's always fought off the lawsuits, but he cannot fight the recordings. Do you think he knows about these recordings? Oh yes. But, really? only because, but only because he knows about SPTV in general. You know, he knows about the the, the movements, all the former Scientologists um, coming on YouTube where nobody can censor them. Nobody can, um, you know, 
be a gatekeeper of any kind whatsoever. Yeah, yeah. What we know, okay, we know that Scientology records and watches every second of every video of every SPTV creator. We know that. We've proven that. Right? I guess. I just don't think, I, I guess I don't think about it that way. I feel like they watch you because you're such a big deal. I'm not a big deal. Oh, no, no, no. They're watching everybody, I promise. They're watching okay. everybody, I promise. Um, wow. And so... Which one is more upsetting? Honestly, I think they're equally upsetting. I don't I don't think one is because because one is like literally threatening to the existence of Scientology. I mean, Leah's lawsuit could result in a multi billion dollar um, finding and damages if this thing goes in front of a jury. I truly, truly feel that way. I feel that Leah's lawsuit is an existential threat to Scientology because it will also set a precedent and open the door to other similar lawsuits. I don't think SPTV poses an existential threat in a legal or a financial sense. I think it poses an existential threat in the sense of so many Scientologists are going to watch the videos of all the SPTV creators and be like, it seems like those guys are living the happy life I would rather be living. I'm sick of being spied on and interrogated and uh, having to censor my own thoughts and not being able to talk to my family members and say what I think. So I, I think the videos, the phenomenon, the YouTube phenomenon and the lawsuits both pose existential threats to Scientology, but in different ways. Um, uh, yeah. We don't pose a billion dollar threat to Scientology. I think Leah's lawsuit does pose a billion dollar threat to Scientology. Um, but yeah. Um, anyway, does that make sense? <laughs> yeah, I think so. Thank you for the question, Roxanne. Anon A says, before the complex in LA was opened, there were people working during the night on the buildings and sometimes sleeping for three hours at a time. People started falling asleep around the buildings. No, it's true. I mean, sleep deprivation in the Sea Org, um, on the RPF, um, on some of these estates jobs at the international base has been so bad over such a long period of time that you do have that thing of, of people sleeping three, four hours a night, uh, sometimes staying up for five days straight, falling asleep uh, in the middle of the day. And it's weird, though. You're right, because... That's different than just having people on a night, sh putting people on a night shift all the time. Well, I would argue it's actually worse. I would argue yeah. having people operate 17, 18 hours a day is even worse than putting someone on just a night shift. Because at least on a night shift, you could potentially acclimate and get some good sleep every day, right? That's true. That's true. Yeah. It's funny though. I guess I guess making someone work 17, 18 hour days gets excused away in in its own it gets that gets excused away in its own right. Even to those people, they'd be like, there's no way Miscavige put the entire training program on a night schedule, right? <laughs> it was a shock. <laughs> yes. Anyway, a, a great comment, Anon. I'm, I'm glad you you pointed that out. Um Bob Ottaviano. Bob Ottaviano. I forget. No matter how I say this, it's always wrong. It sounds right, though, when when you say it. Try it Bob again. Ottaviano. Ottaviano. I'm just going to say Ottaviano. Okay. okay. When David Miscavige drops his, his body, he won't have far to fall. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> A man after my own heart. I love it. Uh, Luna's mom. Uh, Reese, Lori Plays gave me all the info to be on the team. She and Awesome Mod gold uh, she is this referring to goldie or do you have a different mod no Lori. Lori's also my mod no she said oh she oh there you go hi aa run hi luna's mom thank you for that super chat again i'm glad you're a part of the team babe oh look it's keila hey, keila how do they explain all of the women that have died of cancer medical treatment would have been an option so they, they do explain to. they do explain cancer away by body thetans and ptsness um yeah or just that they wanted to, guys. I mean, most I know a lot of people that have died of cancer, and yeah, they they wanted they they wanted to go through that. They chose to. It, it is crazy how Scientologists will say they wanted to drop their body, and you go, yeah, but I think they probably wanted to not have cancer as well, and that didn't. Like, work. why couldn't they do it in their sleep then? If that's really the truth, why couldn't they just say? And I, this makes you think of LRH too. He he died fairly young. I think he was seventy six. If he discarded and moved on because it was all he was done with his research here, why didn't he tell us? Yeah. Why didn't he say anything? I mean, if Liz really wanted to die that way, why didn't she, like you said, why didn't she give her family a call and say, hey, I'm thinking about checking out? That's right. That's right. Yeah. 
Uh, Marsha says, if you're old and become demented, but have a billion year contract, do they just drop you on a curb somewhere? This gets handled a few different ways. There is in Scientology in the Los Angeles area, some special houses where they send Sea Org members who are getting old enough and sick enough that they pose a serious risk of dying. And they've just started moving these people off of the base and putting them into a house and keeping them as busy as physically possible. They're never just told, relax. You don't have to worry about anything. You've just, worked your whole life. Yeah. Just enjoy the time that you have left. No expectations, no schedule, no tasks, no one looking over your shoulder and spying on you. Go ahead and enjoy the TV. Watch some movies. Get rest. some sleep. How about rest? How about rest? rest. Yeah. And we know where that house is. And we know the people who are in that house. And there's actually more than one house. And it's uh, it's sad. It and, is and sad because they don't get like um, hospice care. Hospice is a beautiful thing. So is palliative care. That's That's a service that's free for older people who need help with even just showering or just daily, daily needs. Uh, they don't get any of that. No, 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 no. Now there are some special circumstances. For example, Heber Gench is someone known to most Scientologists. Actually these days, Reese, I'm not going to, you're not going to believe this, but we, uh, uh, a couple of years ago, a young, we were helping a young person leave the C organization. The aftermath foundation was, and, um, I said, Hey, so what have they told you about Heber Gench? And this person, Seerg member, said to me, who's Heber Gench? Oh, my God. I swear to God. I swear to God. Um, I mentioned Heber Gench because he has been tucked away, hidden away off into a, um, a nursing home. He and was that's a huge deal. Yeah, he was a huge deal. I mean, Scientology would tell you he is the president of the Church of Scientology. I mean, they, they, they haven't officially retired him and replaced him. Uh, the thing is, Miscavige doesn't want there to be a president of the Church of Scientology because then that person would be expected to speak to the press. And Miscavige doesn't want anybody speaking to the press. Heber Gench was one of the first guys who could really talk to the press. He was a powerful yeah. presence. He yep. was a speaker. He was a fantastic orator. He could think on it. He could, you know, think on his feet, talk off the cuff. Mm -hmm. He was he was a he was a he was a. A force. My dad loved him. A lot of everyone loved that guy. Mm -hmm. So he, they have shipped him off to a nursing home. Um, again, probably because they know shit. I mean, if, if uh, people would go crazy if they found out they just parked Heber off into a home to die, you know, he's probably too well known in the community for for them to do something like that. But he's, um, but he's an exception to the rule. He's an exception to the rule because someone's got to pay for that nursing home. Miscavige ain't going to pay for that. Miscavige doesn't want to pay for that. But in Heber's case, they will, you know, they won't even pay for. I mean, like I said, guys, I was I've seen a lot of shocking things in Scientology, but for whatever reason, it really shocked me when I was getting these calls going. Did you get this this uh, GoFundMe? We need you to donate. I thought she died on their watch. They can't even give five grand or something to like help pay for a cremation. Nope. That's yeah. shocking to me. That's that that still shocks me. I mean, management won't even jump in to help pay the electric bill. So, you know, <laughs> until, I know. Until, some, until something really, really bad is going to happen. But all right, let's see. Um, PT Bird, lack of sleep is being linked to cancer. I mean, lack of sleep is linked to <laughs> all uh, kinds of. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's the best way to like you want to really torture, truly torture someone. Don't let them sleep. You know, that's true. Uh, Gary Jackson Moore had the one and only. Uh, hey, you too. The entire time I was at the Int Base crew, WDC, the, the, the Watchdog Committee, CMO Int, and um, the Exec Strata Int worked until 3 a.m. as it afforded management to do their management with all orgs across the world. I'm not sure what this what this means. Yeah, but hi, Jackson. Hi, Jackson. But again, the point is their schedule. The point isn't his point isn't necessarily the reason for it. Yeah, but I'll tell you what, though. Now, part of this is because, you know, as a young little Scientology staff member, I had this particular vision in my mind about 
what international management would be like. And it's sort of this oasis and it's um, not connected into the time pressures of all the Scientology orgs in the world and the, the demands of paying public who need to be serviced. Um, I'm a night owl. I'd stay up until 3 a.m. every single night of my life. In fact, most nights I do. So I hear something like that. And I'm like, I'd rather stay up until three or four and sleep until 11 or 12. I mean, that's uh, that's my sweet oh my spot. God, you do do that. Woo! Don't you? I, 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 mean, I can't well, as often as I can. Mm -mm. <laughs> I'm a night you don't, owl. I you don't get up them. early at all, do you? No, if I have to. I mean, look, there's been whole years of my life when I had normal jobs. I had to wake up at six, seven o'clock in the morning, all that kind of stuff. I mean, hell, I was in the Sea Org and on staff. I, you know, um, for me, it's a luxury to be able to sleep in, you know? Yeah, I just can't. I can't sleep past like seven, seven thirty. I can easily sleep until 12 or one if the opportunity presents itself. <laughs> oh my God. I feel like shit if I wake up at like eight o'clock, like I overslept. Oh, wow. No so wonder you send me so many early morning texts. Sorry. Plus I'm no. an hour earlier. Um, but like I hear this thing about the int the int folks working until 3 a.m. and I go, you know, that that could be that could be good as long as they actually are allowed to sleep. But I'm betting, I'm betting they weren't allowed to sleep. I'm betting only Miscavige is allowed to sleep in. I think, in fact, I think I saw another comment about this coming up. So let's see. Uh Oh yeah, yeah. This is this is it. Even poopy pants apple box boy was on this schedule, but RTC itself worked normal hours. Yeah. Wow. See, to me, 3 a.m. just isn't that late, to be honest. Um, oh my God. <laughs> For your age? What? My age? What are you talking about? I don't know. I just feel like the younger you are, the later you can stay up and like bounce back. I can't. Yeah. I'm so tired if I stay up late. I like the quiet. I like, um, uh, I, I just love, I'm such a night owl. I just love the night. I would go to bed at eight thirty, like if I could, if I can make that all work and cook dinner and I'm done with lives, I'll go to bed at eight thirty. Is that right? Yeah. The truth is, I would love if I could, if I could go to bed at eight thirty, nine thirty, get eight hours of sleep and be up. That's the other thing. I do like waking up early in the morning if I'm well rested. I would love to be able to roll out of bed at six o'clock every morning. Yeah, rested, and like go running. That's go what you remind gym. me of. Yeah, yeah, you're like Mr. Fitness. Yeah, it's just I have I just love being awake at night. It's it's actually honestly a problem for me. My life would be much easier. My uh, everything everything would be easier and happier for me if I could be well rested and wake up at six or seven in the morning and get my day started. Also, it's much easier for me to regulate my my diet and my calorie consumption during the day. Once it gets nighttime hours, it gets very difficult for me to have discipline on that. Yeah. You get into um, the Nutella. Aaron, what can we do to work on this? What can we do? Cause I would like to get you up earlier and get you going so that we can get going earlier. I honestly think it would take strong sleep medication for me to regulate my sleeping. And all those medications have such the drowsiness I've tried taking, you know, uh, even now, if I want to go to bed, I'll take, um, the NyQuil pills. I'll take like the NyQuil pills. Um, but like, if I'm like, dude, I really cannot stay up late. I'll take it, you know, the NyQuil pills. But not, not, no, not the NyQuil. Uh, whatever the active ingredient in NyQuil is, you can buy that just at Walmart. You know what I mean? And it, I I, it no makes idea. me so drowsy. It's like the D heptamine or some shit. It makes me so drowsy. I'm like, what's wrong with me? I just want to sleep like a normal person. But anyway, we're, we're getting off track. We're getting off track. Um, um, I had no cat, idea. Cat C Healer, do they let you go to the doctor? It's not against the rules. It's just like pulling teeth to get the money to go to the doctor. So they don't really like they it's it's really like a last resort. Mm -hmm. They don't they, they don't really want you going, but like it's not against the rules. It's just yeah, they're not gonna say you it. can't. Yeah, yeah. Uh okay, Shanna Balake. Uh people mm -hmm. just don't get dehydrated to the point of death for no reason. I have questions. Scientology, it it, it, it is always worse than you think. Thank you, Shanna Balake. Mm -hmm. um evelyn lee barney uh for the first time today i saw some negative slap back on sp twitter threads rinder is that done by wogs or is it okay for a scientologist to do that weird oh there are certain scientologists who have been tasked by the office of special affairs with being horrible to um former scientologists on twitter like lydia hopwood for example Lydia Hopwood is a public Scientologist who, who wishes she was a Sea Org member, but for whatever reason has never joined or has never been allowed to join. 
I'm mentioning her because she's someone who I know is a public, but you will see Lydia Hopwood. Oh, what's the other guy? Garrett. Um, Garrett in Washington, D.C. DC, He has like the Scientology parent blog. Oh, is Garrett his name? Guys in the live chat. Who's the um, he's married to Kathy Glore. What's Kathy Glore's ma married name? Kathy Glore is her maiden name. Uh, he's this guy in the Washington, D.C. area. He created a blog on how to be a good Scientology parent, like Scientology parent. And um, I feel like his name is Garrett, guys. Anyone in the live chat know who I'm talking about? Anyway, he and Lydia Hopwood, they're public, but they will be on Twitter tweeting about me, Mike, Mark, Claire, Leah, everyone. And you're like, why is he allowed? Oh, and, and now he's blocked us. He'll tweet about us, but he blocks us. But he's the one who will, you know, uh, they'll screenshot my tweet and then use it and you know, all that kind of what? shit. Right? I didn't know all this. Oh, yeah. Tad Reeves. Liz. Woo. Yes. Thaddeus. <laughs> Thaddeus. What did I say his name? Was? Um, Thad Reeves married Kathy Glore. So Kathy Reeves. And he is a public. Well, to be fair, he's XC org. So he's a public now, but he's XC org. And he and Lydia. Are to, oh, Paris Morphopolis is another public Scientologist who's allowed to try to interact with us and shit on us on Twitter and stuff. Um, uh, I do yeah. not know any of this, but I don't stay up till three in the morning reading. Yeah. You're not going to see a non-Scientologist just shitting on former Scientologists because <laughs> like everyone hates Scientology. No one's on Twitter just shitting on former Scientologists um, who are they're 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 former they're Scientologists who have been tasked with OSA to do that stuff. Good. It's a good question. Okay, okay let's see. I lost track. Uh, oh, there it is. Bob Ottaviano. Ottaviano. Um, Church of Scientology. Saving the planet one remittance at a time. There you go. Um, Alicia, SPTV supporter. You two are SPTV's Regis and Kathy Lee. I love that. Me too. I thought we were Howard Stern and Robin, but I kind of like this one. I like Regis and Kathy even better. That's nice. I like Because that. I'm not nasty like Howard Stern is. I like Regis and Kathy. <laughs> Does that mean you can be an alcoholic and drink on here? Or drink your wine? all the time? Like Kathy was kind of an, an alcoholic, right? Well, I like candy corn, so we just trade it for the for the snacks. But again, <laughs> again, that's everybody's trigger. Still on my wish list, guys. It's still on my wish list, though. Uh, I watch you both there. every day. Love you guys. I'm always looking forward to what happens next with you two. Thanks for sharing your lives and experiences with us. It does matter. I love Alicia. Thank you. Thank you, Alicia. Uh, Scarlet Begonias, love listening to you guys. Thanks for all the time you spent exposing the criminal cult. That is the Church of Scientology. Bada bing. I hear Truly. that, Scarlet. Truly my pleasure. I Casey Cat. Hey, Aaron and Reese from Irish Fest. Um, oh, Irish Fest weekend in KC. Is there an, is it Irish Fest? Is there something going on? I don't really leave my zip code, but I'll find out. <laughs> on a don't future know. video, could you show us what an auditing session is like? I get this request all the time and I'm actually going to say that I don't want to do it. I don't like using the word triggered and I don't, I'm not triggered by many things, but I honestly feel like recreating an auditing session might be a little too triggering for me to be perfectly honest then definitely that's a no. Yeah. I'd be interested in someone doing it. I know me and Serge have been talking about doing it for a long time. I've even said publicly that it's something me and Serge were going to do, but I really, really don't want to do it. Well, and yeah, Aaron, you shouldn't do it. Yeah. Maybe Serge can find someone who, who really will do it with him. Like, you know what? If Serge and Ian, Ian, um, Ian Rafalco was a, a hugely experienced Scientology auditor, as was Serge. Serge and Ian together have about as much expertise as anybody could want on the subject of auditing. And that would, that would be a good, they could do it. You know, I was thinking about this. I don't know that I have any triggers. Really? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, we, the one we kind of highlighted today was the funeral thing. I mean, that really upset me. Yeah. But I can't think of anything where like, I can't go there. Yeah. I hear you. And I feel like if someone just made it easy for me to contribute to the presentation. I'd probably just do it. I mean, it's not like I'd break down or something. I just, I just feel so icky to me. That's the thing. Yeah, it's it not makes like you it, uncomfortable. It wouldn't make me like sad. It wouldn't, wouldn't, wouldn't cry. Right. I'd be like, oh, no, I don't want to do that. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. I get it. It make you uncomfortable. I get it. Yeah. Just like um, me eating candy corn. I get it. Some people just can't handle it. <laughs> I'm never going to let that go. Uh, Elise Hansen. I hope it's Elise and not Elise, but. Um, Elise Hansen, 
Uh, first super chat. Excellent. Very cool. Oh, S E K. This is must be Swedish. So it probably is not Elise. Mm -hmm. as as uh, much love and respect to you both. Well, thank you so much, thank Elise. You. I hope I hope I'm saying your name correctly. That's really nice. Case Ventura, any pain of a member, former member caused by the Church of Scientology makes me absolutely livid. Uh, keep exposing this, please. The insanity of behavior is unreal. Oh, you know we will. Yeah. Aaron, a.k.a. Air Aaron. Oh, I love it. Thank you for that. Nancy Stitchin. It's my hope that after this organization is taken down, those with funds on account and those with health issues from stress and sleep deprivation are reimbursed. Keep fighting the good fight. Nancy, I just want to say I love you so much. I don't know you personally. Um, I kind of want to, guys. Nancy is amazing. She's super supportive of me. And uh, I wasn't going to, I wasn't going to, I'm not going to say how much, but she has helped me a lot with my office and she's sent me something on Venmo. And Nancy, I just want to say thank you again. I don't want you to feel like you weren't acknowledged for that because you're incredible. I thank you so much. That's amazing. It is amazing. Uh, Dave Owens, Scientologists would bring some food after someone died, but then submit a bill for services rendered. <laughs> yeah. Oh my God. That's terrible, but probably true. Bob is having to teach me this lesson for the 10th time. Ataviano. Oh, see, but that's what I was going to say. See, I, I'm tricking myself. I, that's how I wanted to say it. I wanted to say Ataviano. Ataviano. You're a trickster, Aaron. Quit tricking yourself. <laughs> yeah, it was one of those things where you always tell yourself, however you're about to do it, it's wrong. But then once you get it right, then you, you, it was a double reverse whammy. You know what I'm Aaron, saying. you need to go with your knowingness. Bob Ataviano. Bob Ataviano. Did you even hear what I just said? I have to go with my knowingness. Yes. Trust my theta. My theta. You perception. go with your knowingness. <laughs> Aaron sleep. Aaron sleep probs are. Uh, oh, sleep problems. Aaron sleep problems are an ADHD characteristic too. <laughs> Everyone's convinced I have ADHD and you're probably, yeah. you're probably all totally correct. It's I've made it. Chance. <laughs> I've made it this far regardless. <laughs> Um, Scarlet Phalanges, Aaron, melatonin for the win. Oh, I love melatonin, especially since we buy little melatonin gummies for our kids. But the thing is, I also love the taste of those gummies. So I'll eat like 10 of them. Uh, well, cause, well, cause the gummies are for the kids, right? We have normal melatonin tablets that aren't gummies, but the gummies are so delicious. I'll be like, nom, 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 nom. And melatonin does make me extremely drowsy though. After the next morning. Why do I keep getting yelled at for eating candy corn and called a fat piece of shit, but you get to gobble down your children's melatonin, but I'm the fat piece of shit. I don't understand. I'm never going to let that go. People are going to think that I called you a fat piece of shit. Guys, Aaron didn't call me a fat piece of shit. His somebody in his crowd did a bunch of people like nine people did. Just because an angry person makes a comment on a YouTube video doesn't mean they're part of my crowd. It's Aaron's crowd. My crowd yeah. would never do that. They lift me up. They buy me candy corn. It's on my wish list. They buy me snacks. Uh, if I had any candy corn on me, I would eat with you in solidarity. God. But, uh, it sounds like you have the melatonin, though. You I just... should go just bring some protein bars and just be like. I told you I'm going to get like a meatball sub and smash it to my face and just eat it. I'll get a I'll get a a, 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 um, a subway. A uh, cold cut combo with extra everything on it, and a and a diet coke, and maybe some cinnamon buns, and just be like, <laughs> oh, gross! Subway and cinnamon buns, ew! Oh, yeah, mm, you know you mm. eat Nutella. Nutella might even do it. I'll put Nutella on it. I'll have a jar of Nutella here, and every bite will be a little smear of Nutella. <laughs> Gobble it down. I still can't believe candy corn's the trigger, guys. I just can't let it go. Remember the guy who was like, "Can this bitch stop stuffing her face?" This cattle, this bovine piece of shit. <laughs> I was like, it was dainty too. It was dainty. I was not shoveling it in like I would at a movie theater. It was I very dainty. I didn't even notice you were eating. I didn't even notice. Okay. Yeah. It's not me. That, right. I guess that's my trigger. I guess that's it. There you go. That's it. <clears throat> Cat and Maggie, how is Elon removing the block fu function on Twitter going to alter Scientology social media strategy? This is an excellent question and it has an excellent answer. I I was absolutely, it was the first thing that made me consider not using Twitter when I heard that the block function was being removed, but there's more to it. There's more to it. And I felt better after learning more to it. They're removing the block feature because they're changing what the mute feature does. So 
um, as of now, muting someone didn't prevent them from interacting with your tweets. Moving forward, it will. The mute button, someone will still be able to see your tweets, but they will not be able to respond to your tweet or quote tweet your tweet or subtweet. So um, it's true. They're going to remove the block function but they're going to enhance the functionality of the mute function. So I don't think it will alter Scientology's social media strategy, but um, we will see. Hmm. Evelyn Lee Barney says, Barney like the dinosaur, just call me Ev. Okay. Thank you, Ev. I've always said Barney, and you said Barney, and I thought that was weird a minute ago. I was totally kidding because of the Balake. I was going to go Barney, Barney. I, I knew it was Barney. Clever, clever. <laughs> Miss Scorp AZ was Carol Ann Goatbaum, the lady who died in the Phoenix airport, really a Scientologist. I've got no idea what you're talking about. Yep, me either. That's uh, above my pay grade if it's old information. And if it's new information, I'm just out of the loop. Um, Lori plays. This is because I love Aaron. And this is because I love Reese. I love Lori. Thank you. Lori. We love Lori. <laughs> Thank you, Lori, so much. Uh, Kazri. Kazri of Hakati.com. Oh, my God. That's my new favorite name. A. A. Ron, I'm also a night person. Please avoid the guilt and shame that society heaps on us. Yes, indeed. You be you sleeping the same eight hours. It's what is what's healthiest. And it's true. Even when I go to bed really, really late, I, 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 I'm still capable of getting eight hours of sleep. So that's what really matters. Um, thank you for that. Cat ACDC listening to the regurgitation in these calls. The mentality of L. Ron Hubbard comes shining through. It shows it's not Scientologists that are necessarily dim witted. Okay. Yeah. It's, it's weird certainly... because well go ahead. No, you go ahead. No, you, you. Really? Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> what a little cashew. Um, what was I gonna say now? <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, it really shows though how much they will follow blindly. Like just listening to that little bit of a phone call is like you guys heard me kind of trying to get her to think for herself, just a little, just subtle. But like being like, yeah, you don't ever see the sun. And she's like, yeah. Or I was like, well, you now you don't get to talk to your families. And she's like, that's true. It's like, they, they just, it's so crazy. That's why I hope by releasing these audios that some of these in the bubble people are going to be like, wake up, wake up, wake up. Yeah. You got to get out. Yeah. Anyway, now your turn, your turn. Um, I, 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 I forget, I forget, but that's okay. <laughs> um. Juliana Bittencourt, the uh, Scient theologist. I like that. Hello, Juliana. The Scientolo Geek has a Dianetics auditing video. Okay. I mean, you can get the Dianetics how-to video, and but but Dianetics auditing is not what a Scientology auditing session is like. Dianetics auditing is um, very simple, basic. Um, it's always the same. Scientology auditing is not the same as Dianetics auditing. But um, no. Yeah, yeah. Like the auditing in that Dianetics video wouldn't have any have any similarity hardly at all to a demonstration of a, a Scientology auditing session or a Scientology security check. Nothing even similar to it. Uh, Marsha Bailey needs some good news. Great Bentley. American Cooter Fest in Inverness, Florida, October 6th and 7th, 2023. What in God's name is Marsha talking about? Don't make me Google that. I don't need that in my search history. Is this cats and cats and cooters? Wait, wait, wait. Cats and cooters con. <laughs> I don't know what she's talking about, but it sounds like something I want to attend. As long <laughs> as it's the, the right kind of cooter. If it's uh, turtle, isn't it another word for turtle? It is a type of turtle. Yeah, that's probably what it is in Florida then. <laughs> I've not no idea. Oh Anon my God. A. Any ideas how to get the no longer seen people at Int taken to somewhere safe to ask them if they really want to be there or have seen abuse? So so here's the thing. Any family members of any of the elderly people who are at the international base can file reports to can request safety checks or welfare checks. And um, I mean, that's all I can say. Like every... Uh, it is possible, but realize guys, there, there is a basic assumption 
that a grown ass adult uh, who is not reporting a crime is like it's not really the role of the police or the government or anyone to intervene into someone's personal affairs unless laws are being broken. And um, uh, I feel like I'm contradicting myself. Like I'm what, what I'm not trying to say is there's nothing that can be done. What I am trying to say is that there's limitations and, and we should be thankful that there are limitations. We don't want, we don't, I, I don't think we want the government or the police to have more power than they have to have. But if you are a family member of one of these people, it is within your power and your right to contact the sheriff's office in Riverside County and say, we're concerned. We've not been able to reach this person. We, we are concerned for their welfare and their well-being, and we would like you to go and make sure that they are okay. And the sheriff's office will 100% do that. And <clears throat> if the opportunity arises, I believe the sheriff's office would even go so far as to say, if you do need help or you do want to leave, there's a phone number that I can give you. Um, and I think it wouldn't be crazy to expect that the sheriff's office, you know, using their judgment would do something like that. So if you are related to any of those people, I actually would encourage you to contact the Riverside County Sheriff's Office and say, look, I'm calling to get help, making sure that my relative is OK. And I believe that you will get cooperation. Is that a good answer? That is a good answer. It's a very good answer, actually. Sweet. Panco, Aaron, um, can you put an Amazon wish list like Reese? Um, I probably won't. Uh, you know, people are already so uh, my, my videos already, um, you know, YouTube puts ads on my videos. My videos get a lot of views. Um, I, I, uh, I, I just probably not going to do that. But I am traveling to Los Angeles next week uh, to go to the Danny Masterson thing. And I've said in the past, a lot of people will do super chats to help with travel expenses. And I go, if you want to help with travel expenses, don't do super chats. YouTube takes 30% of that. You can, you can send me that directly on PayPal or Venmo. So I'll probably post those links in a video soon for those who I, I know will want to help. I'm not asking for the help. I just know that people will want to help. Um, That's really nice. But yeah, believe me, uh, between uh, all my kids' wish lists and all the stuff that I buy, we're already uh, uh, a preferred customer with Amazon. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, that was nice of them to ask. Absolutely. I do appreciate it, Panko. Thank you. Um, Abigail says, I was watching your live stream from yesterday throughout the day today at work, about 30 minutes left. Reese, I really hope you contact Doug's family. Huxley deserves the chance to see them. Yeah, Abigail, you're not wrong. I just want to do it in the right way where nobody on my side of the fence gets hurt. I want to be very protective of Huxley and careful. This is not to be retaliating and, um, you know, to harm Doug and Brenda. This would be solely to get Huxley in, in touch with them and somehow stay away from Doug and Brenda. Which yeah. speaking of Doug and Brenda, guys, I was telling Aaron something before we started and you said, are you going to share that? And I thought, yeah, we should. Um, Huxley has a scout boy scout thing this weekend like they often do and uh jeff is a scout leader um within his troop and so they're doing it together they always do stuff together and huxley jeff is at it's like a fair this weekend it's it's like a you know i guess there's stuff going on somebody mentioned irish fest so there's stuff going on this week. it's hol right holiday weekend labor day weekend right it is yeah i know that because my favorite designer already had a sale and i ordered something um there were a lot of sales this weekend, guys. Check your inboxes if all your favorite places. No, I ordered a rug personally. What was I saying? So, um, the thing, the thing, the what are we saying? The uh, fair. Yeah. Back to the fair. Um, Jeff is there setting up now. Huxley's still in school today, but Jeff calls me earlier before the live, and he's like, uh, "We're setting up for you know the scout stuff." And he goes, "We just um, took care of and let a bunch of Scientologists in for their booth." And I was like, "Ah, oh, shit. Okay, those pesky Scientologists." And he said, "What do I do if?" Because see, Doug is a huge bookseller. He sells books every single weekend. He always has. He goes all around Kansas City and he sells books. I don't know who's buying books, um, but I and he, there's a good chance Doug would be there. He was at the last thing we went to when we were still talking to him. We ran into him. So I'm a little nervous about this. So and uh, so there's a chance that Huxley will be at this thing this weekend. 
that his grandfather who disconnected from him might be at as well. Do you think Huxley would want to approach him? Yes. And, and that's why I'm nervous. I just said that about the Doug's family. I want to be protective. I really don't want Huxley to see Doug only because I know Doug will reject him. And I do not, that, that wound is not closed in any way, guys. It's only been a few months. So I'm nervous about this because at, just as a parent, as a mom, I'm like, I really want to shield him from that. I don't know that Doug would be stupid enough to come volunteer at this thing because it's close to our house and he knows that. So hopefully he dipped out of it. Um, but I am going to be furious. Like, I feel like I need to go now to just watch and, and keep an eye on that because if Doug is there, I just want to get Huxley the hell out of there. Yeah. And of course, Doug won't, if Doug will not approach us, you know, if he sees us, of course he's going to run the other way. Right. Um, I don't know, Aaron, I don't know what to do about that. Well, the only thing powerful OTs are afraid of is an SP. So Huxley has superpowers now because Huxley is by extension, a, a, a little SP. So, he's been deputized. <clears throat> he's been deputized. Yeah. He's been deputized as an SP. Um, so I hope he knows what kind of uh, incredible power he wields over an OT8 like his grandpa Doug. Yeah, I, I really don't want to go. I have other things to do this weekend, including some lives. And I really don't get involved in the Boy Scout stuff because that's I like I, I do it intentionally. I like that that's a thing for him and Jeff. That's like I love that Jeff is a scout leader and they do it together. And there's Jeff now. Good. He's picking up Huxley. I wanted to make sure. Um, I, I like that. So I kind of purposely stay out of it so they can do their thing. They really like it together. It's kind of a boy's thing. You know, it's a guy's thing. Um, so I really didn't want to go. And now I'm just kind of, uh, I feel torn. Hmm. Uh, if I do go believe you're going to have some new footage. Oh boy. Cause I'm going <laughs> to, I'll be chasing those Scientologists all around with this thing. Dude, if you go, I just called you dude. If you go okay. and the Scientology booksellers are there. And even if Doug isn't there, I hope you get some footage. <laughs> I probably will. I probably, I, it would be funny to go up to them and, you know, they're like, you know, if they don't know me, if they said something like, would you like a stress test? I'd love to be like, well, you're going to be the one with the stress test here in a minute. Cause I've been declared run. <laughs> oh my God. Uh, Judy Bishop says, I bet the creeps that said awful things are still in Scientology. Uh, let it go. You live in doll. Oh, this talking about you eating. And James C says, do you bite the white part off of the candy corns? I do like to, I didn't do it on the live because again, I was trying to be dainty about it, but I do like to bite each section, James. I'm glad that you asked me that. That's an important question. Um, it's worth the $2, I assure you. Um, so yes, I like to bite each in individual section. I do. It's the proper way. Cat ACDC fan points out, Aaron ate a pie out of the tin for fuck's sake. Exactly. I don't the see anybody calling Aaron a fat piece of shit. It's because I stayed away from the microphone. Actually, I was assuming that their comments were related to noise. But if you were making noise in the microphone, I would have heard it. And I never I didn't even realize you were eating. I mean, I didn't realize anyone had made shitty comments until you were like the next morning. You're like, oh, my God, I, I can't all believe sleep it. deprived. I didn't sleep that night. I was all upset. Yeah, I'm, I'm in favor of eating. I'm in favor of eating on on uh, camera. In fact, some people I are into that. That's a, a you know. That's what I'm saying. If you, I, I normally get paid over on my OnlyFans you to get naked and don't eat say pizza. that. Don't say that word in a video. They'll, 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 they'll don't say my that word. OF. Just say just for fans. My just for fans. Okay, fine. I know that you. It's important for you to stay monetized. It is not for me. I want to. I want to say what I need to say. Plus, I don't make that much money anyway. But okay, fine. I'll do it on my own channel. But you can hop over point. to that channel. We're, and we're pay ninety me to minutes eat in. It. You can probably say anything at this point. Yeah, it's a shame. It's a shame, guys, because I'm just saying I get paid to do that. Just kidding. Jeff won't let me do it. <laughs> um, Reese pronounced my name correctly. So it really is Betsy Sue. It really See? is Betsy Sue. I knew it. That's great. I love it. Uh, Barbara Mangano. If some of the listeners don't like you, just remember, you probably don't like some of them either. <laughs> sure. <laughs> that is a good thing to remember, Barb. 
Well, you must have started this one because I don't think I did. What I did it? because I wanted to say thank you. Gertie got her greenies. I had greenies. I still have more of them on my thing because you guys are doing awesome giving me the, I put like dog toys and treats on my wish list and people, do you know what greenies are? They're, uh, they're little I mean, chewy they bones. vitamins. No, oh. they're chewy bones because she's old and she has a smelly brow, breath. She's stinky. It's a little bit stinky. And so the greenies help with that, combat that. And she loves those. And she's very particular about what she likes. So thank you for sending those guys. Thank you for everyone who sends stuff. Amazon doesn't always put your name. So when I open a box, it'll say, enjoy your gift. But nobody puts, it doesn't put a name. So sometimes there is, sometimes there is not. So I've just been coming on and acknowledging everyone and saying, thank you. I don't want anyone to think I'm being rude and not thanking them. I'm very grateful. Yeah. Um, don't forget there's candy corn on there though. And it still hasn't been purchased. <laughs> Guys, if you're one of the 3000 people watching live right now, do us a favor real quick and hit that like button. It's, 3, fast. it's easy. It's fast. It's easy. It's free. Yeah. There's 3000 people watching race. There's th always so many people now when we're on, I hope some of them are subscribed to me. Yeah, subscribe to Reese, Relatable Reese. Her, her uh, channel is linked in the description down below. Don't subscribe and, um, to me if you think I'm a fat piece of shit, though. I don't want to hear about it. Stay on Aaron's <laughs> channel. Ay, 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 Jill J. Thank you. Just correct, A-K-A, T-C-P-U-D-P, to all. Please also support the Aftermath Foundation. Yeah. Hey, guys, I'm creeping up. Remember I said, remember, remember when I hit my 170,000 subs and I did the um, Aftermath Foundation celebratory fundraiser for that? I said, guys, every time I get another 10,000 subs, I'll do another celebration fundraiser. I had no idea I'd get close to the next, um, the next um, step. So quickly, I'm I'm almost at 180, and when Dang. we get to when we get to 180, I'll do another um, live stream aftermath foundation fundraiser. So that'll be fun. Uh, Rita C, I mean, we raised almost we raised almost twenty thousand dollars for the hundred and seventy thousand subscriber celebratory That's fundraiser. That's amazing. Truly incredible. Truly incredible. Um, oh wait, I didn't read the last one. Rita C, Wog here. Love you both. Love you too, Rita. Thank you. Uh, how okay. do we say this name? Cat Matajets. I'm going with that. Yeah, that or sounds cool. I like Mat that. Matajets. Cat Matajets. Can I contact an org to find a public that I know? Hmm. If I was working reception at an org and someone said, hey, I'm looking for this Scientologist. I, I mean, I, I certainly, you shouldn't expect anyone to give you their contact info. Um, but you know what, Cat? It can't hurt. Say, look, I'm an old friend. I'm looking for this person. How do I? Oh, you, you know what you could do? You could say, can if they're like, yes, we know that person. You could say, oh, could you give them a message from me? They, they, they will take your information. See, uh, uh, they're not a, a normal Scientology staff member or a Scientology public isn't really cut off from society in the same way that a Sea Org member is. Right. If they genuinely know the person and you give them your contact info, which I don't know if you want to give Scientology your contact info, but uh, they would actually pass it on to the person. So if you're genuinely trying to find somebody, you, you could call an org. It might work. Uh, okay, Marsha Bentley says, um, Cooter is a river turtle and you eat them in the south from oh. from the Gula, Gula language for a specific freshwater turtle. Oh, yeah, for sure. How could you eat turtle? That's depressing. Do you do that? Turtles are dicks. What? <laughs> what did you just say? <laughs> what did you say? They're always messing up traffic, getting in front of cars and shit. I mean, they've got no respect. Excuse me? Aren't they turtles, like endangered? Tur oh, pff, turtles aren't endangered. Turtles are crossing the street all of the time in my neighborhood. To be fair, people that love the turtles, and, and I, I'm making a joke when I say turtles are dicks. People are constantly getting out of their cars and moving the turtles off of the street and closer to the water. They have no respect. What's wrong for, with that? Uh, no, I'm just, I'm, I'm being okay. funny. Did, did, it ever, did it ever occur to you that maybe assholes. we built all this cars and lanes and shit in their territory? I know. Don't get me started on the gators. How are they supposed gators? to get across? How are don't they supposed get, to get across? Don't get me do started you, on the gators. Do you ever, I was just going to say, do you ever see alligators there? Yeah, they're in like every body of water here ever. Do you see them though? Yeah. I want to get one. I want to come send, there to pet one. I'll send you a photo next time. I would if really you're on a, like to yeah. have one. If you're on a golf course here, you are going to see an alligator. That is so cool. Do you know how neat that is to somebody in the Midwest? I, All I, I have is my I coyote. I feed my coyote, but that would be cool to have an alligator. That's so neat. Hey, we've even got coyotes. You do? 
Yeah. And we've got deer. At least you see deer on the, on the, on the, well, you don't see the those. coyotes on the golf courses, but I feed the deer. Yeah. Do I you like... feed the alligators? No. no. Okay. Okay. No, you're not allowed to molest the alligators. I'm Bo upset beats. with you about the turtles. <laughs> Bo Beats, I too am a cancer and I feel you, girl. Hi, AA Ron. Hi, Bo Beats. She gets it. She gets me. Uh, let's see. Love Sherlock says, Aaron, the last few days when I try to post a comment on your live, it can't be seen and then disappears. I also can't do super chats on your channel either. Huh. I'll have to look into it. I mean, unless you, you're putting in a word there that's automatically being censored, which I'm, I doubt you are. Um, I'll try to go back and look on the back end and see if for some reason you've been blocked or something. But clearly, unless, I mean, you must be commenting on Reese's channel. Otherwise, this super chat would prove that you can comment on my channel. I'll check it out, Love Sherlock. I'll check it out. Uh, Carol says, uh, y'all, I just love you two. I'm an ER vet. Uh, ER veterinarian, and I'm working this weekend. I love seeing. Thank your you pets. for your service. Thank you for your service. I love seeing your pets, even here at the ER. It's a great day not to be in a cult. XOXO from the mitten. I think that means uh, D uh, Michigan, right? I don't know. I just love her for what she does, though. She saves animals. Yeah, Michigan is broken up into the mitten part and the other part, so I think that's what it is. Denver Stevo. I've just been zoning out since I haven't done a super chat in days. Osa smells like poo. Reese smells like unicorns. Oh, thanks, Denver Stevo. That's so nice. Miss Scorp AZ, 2006, 2007. Police said, What? What the hell are we talking about here? What? I don't want to read this out loud. Hold on. I need to read it. Oh, somebody must have asked me if means. I. Oh, someone asked a question that had a name and we said, we have no idea who that is. And this is probably an explanation of who that was. Someone, the police said that an individual strangled themselves with their arms cuffed behind her back, which obviously would be impossible. Rumor was here to deal with, I'm sorry, Miss Scorbese. I just, that's, a, that's too, that's uh yeah, I don't understand. I don't, I don't know. I don't know anything about that. I wasn't there. It wasn't me. Okay. Um, thank you, Francis. Uh, Ginny Stout says, Mama Bear needs to be at the fair. Okay. Yeah, I'll go. I'm going to go. I'm definitely going to go. I wanted to go anywhere. There's probably funnel cakes calling my name. <laughs> maybe some enchiladas. Enchiladas. Uh, maybe a food truck. Um, yeah. Candy corn. Marcia still says, on the list. <laughs> still on the list. Marcia says, talk with Huxley first so he understands that any rejection would be because of Doug's religion and not because his grandfather has stopped loving him. Oh, I've already had that conversation, Marcia. Just in case we ever do see or hear from him, we've talked about that at length. Yeah. Workaholic Panda. That's another one of my new favorite names. We need Candy Corn and Nutella Mukbang. Yeah. So, you know what? Mukbang is a YouTube thing where you basically just stuff your face with food. Okay. Because I keep seeing people say Reese mukbang and i'm like what does that mean is that calling me a fat piece of shit it's for people who have a food fetish so there it's a whole genre of youtube videos where like cute asian girls will just stuff their faces with like ten thousand calories and um people pay for that shit yeah that's because they're cute asian girls that's why i can't get it over on my only oh for, no only no it's, it's a genre age. welcome to all shapes and sizes and ages i promise you oh well that's cool yes and some people like the bigger the better Okay. 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 I was going to say, if it didn't work for me eating on that page, I do have really cute feet. I do. I've been told that by many people. Well, there you go. You have a bright, bright so, future ahead of you. Yeah. If this YouTube gig doesn't work out. Swimming in cash. Over to that. Yeah. Swimming yeah. in cash. PDD. Reese, I tried to order the candy corn and Amazon wouldn't let me send it to you. Um, That's... We're going to file a complaint. But first, before you skip to the next one, Aaron, PDD, I don't know who you are, but I got a package from you today from my wish list. And I wanted to say thank you. And I'm like, who is this person? Because it just said PDD. And I was like, who is that? So you thank go. you. I want to say thank you to you right now for, for the dog bones. Um, I think you sent me the, the PMS gummies. I'm trying to, trying to get some, get that under control. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Seriously, you sent me a lot of stuff. So thank you. 
Very cool. Roxanne says, question, can OTs be in communication with all dead people or just dead Scientologists? All dead people. No, and you don't have to be dead. It's just Thetan spirits because Thetan, uh, you you know, a Thetan, uh, um, an OT believes that they can telepathically communicate with even living people. Like they're just telepaths. OTs are like the kid from that movie with Bruce Willis. They can see dead people. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah. Um, NF fangirl. Aaron, I'm in Minnesota. You mentioned Minnesota in a previous video. Do you still have family here? Any information on the Church of Scientology organization in St. Paul? Um, NF fangirl. Yeah. So my my whole childhood growing up, my father and uh, his wife lived in Minneapolis. Uh, but they have moved out of Minnesota and they live in Wisconsin. Uh, except um, my stepmom is uh, she's still a doctor and she, the hospital that she works at is still in Minnesota. But I and it actually might even be in Minneapolis. But um, uh, whatever she does as a doctor, she doesn't work every day. So she'll commute and stay a couple you know, days or whatever in Minnesota and work at the hospital and then go back to Wisconsin. So um, I don't think I, I at this point, I don't think I have any family in Minnesota. I still have a lot of family in Missoula, Montana, which, by the way, is where I was born. I was born in Missoula, Montana. I didn't know that. Yep. I, and I've, I've been back a few times recently. Um, I still got aunts, cousins. My grandma lives in Montana. Um, I love cool. Montana. Yeah. That's awesome. I've always wanted to go there. Yeah. If I didn't live in Florida, I might just live in Montana. My kids would wow. love it. My kids would lo- lo- love it. I mean, I've heard it's amazing. Isn't that where, um, oh my God, Yellowstone. Isn't that where that's filmed? Yep. Yeah. It looks amazing. Yeah. Cat and Maggie says, just found out that Amazon will not allow the candy corn on a gift shop. Sorry, gorgeous. I tried. That's sick. And I'm going to get to the bottom of this right now. Yeah, we need to invest. Don't worry. I'll add some other snacks, though. <laughs> Maddie, so y- Maddie, Matt, um, Maddie, Yats. Perfect. I won't forget that. Cat and Maddie, Yats. Maddie Yats. Oh, yeah. Maddie that's Yats. cool. That is cool. Maddie, Yats. Maddie, Yats. Maddie, Yats. Maddie, Yats. Maddie, Yats. I won't forget. Okay. <clears throat> Although that's what I said about Ottaviano too. So Ottaviano. Um, uh oh, Nora's in the chat. Oh no, Nora's in the chat. Clearly, Aaron doesn't stand teenage mutant ninja turtles, and now I'm truly outraged. <laughs> no, no, I don't I actually do like turtles. I just thought it would be funny to call turtles a bunch of assholes. <laughs> do you really like them though? Or are you just trying to clean it up? I, I don't no, I think turtles are adorable. Um, I don't I've never had a turtle. Oh, the lights out. Oh, for God's sakes, you have got to work this out. We need to start a wish list just for that. Guys, I'm trying to figure this out right now, this whole Amazon business. Here, I guess what I'll do. Okay, I just added a different one to my wish list. It's not the Brock's brand. Do I need to get that one? No. What are we laughing at? Okay, I got I got a new one added. Yeah. Okay. Roxanne says, has anyone claimed to be in calm with L. Ron Hubbard post party post body drop? Yes. I remember Bunny Dubin was being um, sec checked for cheating on her husband. And she said, it's okay. Cause she was in calm with LRH and LRH said oh it was fine. God. LRH said it was fine. So it was fine. Oh my God. Now, of course they had to go find out why L. Ron Hubbard told Bunny it was okay to cheat on Dennis, but you know, Whatever. People do claim to be in common with LRH, but those people are called crazy in Scientology. Cuckoo birds. Yeah. What is Abigail talking about here? Can we do a fundraiser for the awesome moderator Goldie since she lost her job? Oh, you mean she lost her job in real life? Goldie I didn't know lost that. her job? I don't know. Did I, did Goldie want Abigail to tell everyone that? <laughs> I, I didn't know if Goldie lost it. I didn't know Goldie had a job. How is she able to moderate all of our channels all the time if she's at work? <laughs> That's a good, that's true. I, I just assumed Goldie was retired. That's sad. I'm sorry, Goldie. Is she in here? <laughs> Abigail, are you throwing all Goldie's business into the chat? Mm. Okay, I'll have to ask Goldie about that. <laughs> okay, oh my goodness. Uh, John Sostowski, my friend Mickey Sudo, world champion professional eater, will be stuffing her face this weekend with buffalo wings. She holds the record with 233 wings in 12 minutes. Oh, Oh, I think I'm in love. I'm going to have to Google that. That's amazing. Spike Riz, turtles. Hey, Aaron, don't be an ass hat. (laughs) Yeah, Aaron. It's so funny. Turtles are not a pet peeve of mine. I think turtles are adorable. I love the sea turtles are even extra Mm -hmm. adorable. I just thought it'd be really funny to call an animal a dick. (laughs) 
You better help uh, them when they're in the road, Aaron. I have never run over a turtle, but I'm also afraid to touch them. So I'll, I'll, I'm not touching a turtle. Okay. So Why? I'm not touching a turtle. I'm not touching you a wild animal. No, you won't touch no, a cooter. No. You're not getting near a cooter. I'm not touching. That tells us a lot. Yes. That explains a lot. It. Someone else can move the turtle. I'll stop the car. Someone else. My kids love turtles. They can touch the turtles. Okay. <laughs> That's weird that you won't touch a turtle. <laughs> nope. Not touching one. I've been, I'm, I mean, I wouldn't touch a deer either. You know, I would touch a panda bear. I would touch a panda bear. You wouldn't touch a deer? No, no. You're they weird. Could have mites or ticks or something. I mean, that's uh, weird. That's you, not me. Um, Lisa says, I've been missing you guys in the last few lives. The local fair has been going on here in my part of Pennsylvania. Well, I guess it's just fair season or something. Yeah, I think it is. Honestly, I think because I think the Iowa State Fair was like last weekend. Oh, okay um care for jcyt buy some cane of corn on me that must be in your chat there you thank go thank you i just added like six different bags just in case you couldn't get i think jeff my good friend jeff in here said that he just bought some for me i love jeff i can always rely on him thank you jeff very nice laura font when an sp drops the body does it come back again as an sp again or is it cleansed and has a chance to be a Scientologist again? That is a fantastic question. It depends on if we're talking about, and I'm going to answer this question as a Scientologist would answer it. Um, <clears throat> so L. Ron Hubbard basically acknowledged that uh, only two and a half percent of the population are true SPs, but about another 17 and a half percent take on the personality of an SP because they're connected to SPs. And so they start acting like the SPs. So right. a Scientologist would say that if you're a truly dangerous two and a half percenter, that is an SP because you're stuck in this incident of past a whole track incident of being completely overwhelmed. You are going to reincarnate as an SP. But if you were just one of those, you know, 17 and a half percent who were under the dirty influence of a true two and a half percenter, chances are you would come back as a normal ass person. Um, Although I have a question. I have a question about this. Didn't you, I, I think I remember either being told or reading that LRH said the true evil, like um, Hitler actually never came back. Like they couldn't pick up a body again. I, I remember being I told like that it was so much, it was so evil that like he didn't, he wasn't able to come back and pick up a body. Like he can locate GPS wise where he is. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. That's uh, that's above my pay grade. Okay. Well, this may be my last life then. <laughs> Black Widow Sammy Reese, ask Jeff if he likes cooter soup. Oh, geez. Um, he probably does. Jeff eats some gross stuff. Okay. The invisible chat problem is a YouTube glitch. Huh. Okay. Scarlet Begonias. Gee, some people specifically watch people eating in videos. Mukbangs. Screw the haters, Reese. Yeah. That's why we're getting the, the wish list of snackies. Thank you, Scarlet. I, I, I say one Friday evening. We just do um uh we do mukbang Friday. What is it when you get um uh the um uh the um the crawfish and the potatoes and the corn? There's a word for this. Like everyone just dumps all the food on the table and oh there's, there's a word for this. Uh, yeah, someone in the gross. live chat. Someone in the live chat. What's the word I'm looking for? Mm -mm, not doing um, it. I'm looking in the live chat, guys. It, it, and the word is not mukbang. Um, it, 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 it's not just a cookout. There's a word for it. There's a word for it. Anyway, uh, so a seafood boil. A seafood yes, boil. yes, 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 yes. A seafood boil. So what we need is a seafood boil. We'll mix in some Twizzlers, some candy corn, some Nutella. Um, and I'll just be I'll be dipping corn in the Nutella. Like we can get nasty. You're the um, only person I know. You said you did this at Leah's house. You were like eating M&Ms and something else. Yeah. How do you do this? I could never, it's like smoking cigarettes and eating. I could never do that. How do you mix if two I, things if like I that? I enjoy the taste oh. of two things separately. I can eat them together. That's I could so gross. Aaron. I could eat Brussels sprouts and a Snickers bar at the same time. Well, I you clearly have a lot of problems. That we I have to love, the bottom. I love Brussels sprouts. Oh my God. I do too. That's unusual. Not everybody. I love Brussels sprouts. I order them in restaurants all the time and I make them. I make them too. I mean, the truth um, is the m most of, you know, it's probably because they're cooked with an unbelievable amount of butter, but still I enjoy a good Brussels sprout. I roast mine in olive oil. Um, uh, some, salt, some salt on them. Lots of salt. I do. I do truffle salt, thick, Ooh. crispy chunks of truffle salt with it. Um, Aaron, we should do that, but I'm not doing the seafood boil. I don't eat seafood, but I will happily 
eat a sandwich or some pizza. Um, I'd like to really get people's triggers <laughs> so they can really get out calling me a fat piece of some shit. Pasta? They're going to be like, some Alfredo. What are they going to call you? They're going to be like, Aaron, you fit piece of shit. <laughs> Reese, I'll you wear, fat bovine. I wear like a really tight shirt that makes me look fat. Okay. Well, yeah. I don't have to do that. I can wear either one and I look fat. So. <laughs> um, okay. Marsha Bentley, Nutella and banana crepes, a German fast food. Yeah, it's incredible. It's incredible. Bananas mm -hmm. and Nutella can make anything amazing. Bo Beats, Reese, this is a well-intentioned suggestion for you. Uh-oh. Moving your mic to an angled higher position won't accentuate Gee, your this chin is so kind. as much. So, Bo, first of all, thank you for commenting on my chin. I really appreciate that. I like to highlight the worst parts of my body for 3,000 people watching to talk about it. So thank you for that, Bo. Um, I think you've convinced me to go get one of those other channels because I don't think YouTube's going to work out. Um, this is uh, a different mic stand than the one I've been using. So I'm, and I don't know how to move this stuff around. So Jeff is going to put back the other one I had, which is the tall one. So hopefully Bo, you can pay attention to the chin and, and comment again, if it, <laughs> if it, uh, is well suited to <clears throat> the 3000 watching, but thank you. Oh and feel God. free guys to comment on any other body part that we feel like needs to be, maybe we can raise enough money for me to get surgery. Then I'll go get, I'll go get a lift. Some light bow. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Elizabeth Marino says, Reese, your son should do a video call with his great grandma and family. That's actually, that's actually pretty yeah. good. Yeah. Yeah. I'm totally up for that. I just yeah. have to work it out. I think I'll send a card first and I just don't know guys. People seem to be hung up on this. I don't know these people very well. I didn't go to the Thanksgivings every year. I've never even been to the house that's five hours from here in Iowa. So I think I'm just going to feel it out naturally, organically, send a card, maybe make a phone call. But depending on what Doug and Brenda have told these people, they may not want to speak to me. I don't know. Yeah. Okay. Eight points out of our factor says, do you know what visa the old timey SO members got into the States on and what sort of visa they will be on to stay? My understanding is that it was usually an R1 religious worker visa and uh, the visa they would normally get on to stay is a green card. <laughs> they would find someone to marry and get a green card. That's normally how that works out in the C organization. Mm -hmm. um, Rachel says, everyone send A.A. Ron and Reese snacks from around the world. <gasps> I love that idea. idea. I've heard in a very long time. I love that idea. It's like going to world market. Yep. 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 Yeah. Yep. Fat Cat's Heaven, making oatmeal cookies, half the raisins, half the sugar, 2x the raisins. Oh, okay. Oatmeal raisin cookies are my favorite cookies. Ew, really? Oh, my God. I love oatmeal raisin cookies so, 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 so much. You're kind of weird, Aaron. I don't know about you. You don't like oatmeal raisin cookies? I mean, if it's there, I'm going to say hello to it. But no, it's not my favorite by any means. What's, what, what's your complaint? The oatmeal or the raisin? I think probably the rate now I love raisinets because we're dunking those in chocolate, but I mean, I don't even really like carrot cake if it's like got a bunch of raisins in it. Mm. I also love carrot cake. I believe that if you love raisins, do you like to just eat raisins? Do you like to just eat them like an old person? No, it feels like too much straight carbs unnecessary. Because <sighs> mm -hmm, just... I worry I'll... about that all the time too. But you know what my other guilty pleasure is? I do this all the time because Costco has got these in stock. Uh, dates the the dried the dried candy dates oh my goodness i love those so does jeff you guys are weird i don't understand yeah. well um, that's why john sent me fudge and not you because he knew that i would appreciate it more and i don't worry about unnecessary carbs or sugar there you go uh i mean if i'm gonna eat unnecessary carbs it's gonna be in a spoonful of nutella straight to the mouth <laughs> You know, oh, no. No. Reese, uh, it says 842 watching on Reese's channel. Okay. Well, that means, um, the, that's cool spike. Yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good guys. If you're one of the 3000 people still watching, hit that like button. Pretty please uh, actually sign up helps us out. Um, I never dreamed that we were going to turn a seven hour, a seven minute phone call into a two hour live stream. But once again, Reese, we did it. I did. Why please. do you say that? Aaron, we can just keep going and going. It doesn't even feel like two hours. I think we I do know. great at this. I worry. I, I worry that there's um, uh, 
so many people out there who don't want to click on a two hour video. But I mean, it seems to be working out. Yeah, silly Sally. They're here with us. Look no, I know. I know. I know. I know. But, you know, most of the views happen on the replay. But um, no, it's great. I mean, I, I'm not complaining. I, I'm glad that we were able to have fun for two hours. Um, Chris says, Aaron raisins are nothing but humiliated grapes. Yuck. Love you guys. That's I great. kind of agree. Now, I do love a grape, just not so much a raisin. Yeah. God, it's only 620. I swear to God, I had five like like videos I was really gunning to do today. And I feel like I'm still got a few left in me. I mean, it's 630, but um, go for it. I know. I think I got I think I got at least three more in me. We'll see. OK, well, are we you and I might do something tomorrow, I would imagine. For sure. uh, sometime tomorrow night, probably we'll try to do squeeze the can Saturdays with Jeff. Try to make cool. his needle float. Cool. Um, and then we are doing that, guys, I think on Saturdays instead of Sundays. I got a lot of requests that Super Bowl or whatever Sundays, football Sundays. So oh, we'll yeah. maybe do that on Saturday nights. But don't worry, Aaron and I might do something tomorrow, too, if he has Absolutely. time for me. Absolutely. All right, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with us. As always, thank you to everyone who watches until the very end. Bye, guys. Talk to you soon. Okay, if you want to see my rock and roll songs, click right on this guitar. And if you want to see a, a different one of my videos, uh, then you could click right inside here. If you have subscribed or not, 